live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 18. Brought to you by Docker and its ecosystem partners. Welcome to theCUBE. We are live in San Francisco at DockerCon 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host for the day, John Troyer. And John, it is not only a stunning day in San Francisco, beautiful blue skies, this is a packed event. Their fifth DockerCon event, and they've got between 5,000 and 6,000 people. We just came from the general session keynote, and it was standing room only as far as the eyes could see. Yeah, it looks like a good crowd here, a lot of energy. Docker keynotes, always super interesting. They always do a lot of demos. They bring up a lot of employees. It's not just like a, a parade of middle-aged executives. Always you super dynamic, a lot of demos. Really like the keynote this morning. Uh, I did too, the energy you mentioned was great. It kicked off with, who was the name of that gentleman that is one of the rally Frank, guys for? Franco Finn Franco from the Finn, Warriors. Franco who is, uh, works for the Warriors, the 2018 Golden State Warriors NBA champ. So that was a great way to kick it off. But also Steve Singh had great energy, their CEO, we're going to have him on shortly today, Scott Johnston, and as you talked about, their employees, and also customers. They have some really great numbers. They've got, um, I think, about, 120 sessions this year at DockerCon, nine big enterprise customers talking about how they are approaching containerization with DockerCon. One of them was McKesson, which is a, what, 183 year old company with a lot of stuff that gave a really compelling keynote, or a, yeah, keynote mm -hmm. this morning about how they are moving and modernizing their data center with Docker. A really nice story, uh, really an emphasis on trust, an emphasis on developer usability. I like one of the points was, once we got the developers using it, it became easier. Uh, and I think using the whole platform. Uh, Lisa, I think they, they, they hit a lot of familiar themes for Docker. So, developer experience, really big for Docker. That's the way they started, that's what they're still counting on. When Steve Singh got up, he talked about community, the very first thing, over half of the people here, first time at DockerCon, and over half of the folks are just using containers in the late last year. That means this whole journey is just starting. There's a lot of white space in the container world. Uh, so developer experience, a big announcement, a preview announcement for, for uh, Docker Desktop, uh, being able to create apps off of templates and things like that, but very developer-focused shows as opposed to some of the more IT focus. There's a, there's a broad mix here, but definitely a lot of developers here at the show. A lot of developers, as you said, but also, you're right, it is a mix. It's IT professionals, it's enterprise architects, and it's executives, and that's one of the, one of the target audiences that I think both Steve Singh and Scott Johnston talked about. So it'll be great to explore as the CEO and Chief Product Officer, respectfully, what are they hearing from enterprise customers who have a lot of challenges with legacy applications that are very difficult to manage. Uh, and I also read a, uh, some stats, they had some stats in the press release this morning that about 80% of enterprise IT budgets are spent keeping the lights on for enterprise apps, which leaves you know, about 20% for innovation. And of course, as we know, Organizations that can aggressively innovate are the ones that win. So I'm, I'm not only looking forward to hearing with Docker Desktop what they're doing to make it easy, easier for developers to get in there and play around on both on Mac and Windows, but also the executive conversation. What are they hearing from the executives and where is containerization, um, you know, from the C-suite to the boardroom. Yeah, modernizing enterprise apps also has been a Docker theme for the last few years. Microsoft, the big guest up on stage, they've been a multi-year partnership with Microsoft and Docker, with putting uh, Docker with Windows together. The big announcement today, a uh, pre technology preview of Kubernetes and Windows Server, and the, uh, the big demo was they took a very old .NET application and you know, put it up on Kubernetes on Windows with just a couple of clicks. So again, I think that message to the executives is you're very safe in Docker's hands, we've got the developer experience covered, we've got the partnerships, and then going big on Windows, I think choice was another theme that I heard. Yes, I'd, it was. We'd love to talk about Steve to, talked uh, a lot about choice. Uh, to the execs here as well, uh, both of, GUI and CLI, right? A, a lot of uh, the cloud is very CLI focused, very Linux focused. Docker says, we're, we're in on Windows. We're, we support Windows just as well as Linux. So don't hate on the GUI. Like, you can, you can use a GUI or you can use a CLI. 
no religion actually too, uh, in terms of Linux versus Windows, but Kubernetes I thought was a very big, got mentioned a lot in the keynote this morning, Lisa. It did, and you talked about choice. One of the things that Steve Singh mentioned from an executive's perspective is three things that Docker is aiming to deliver that sounds to me as a marketer like competitive differentiation. It talked about choice, so that organizations can run apps wherever it makes sense for them. Um, managing applications on any infrastructure, and as you said earlier about a few clips, managing their container uh, infrastructures across multiple clouds um, in just a few clicks. They also talked about um, being, they also talked a number of times, not just in the press release, but also to this morning in the keynote about no vendor lock-in. John, we hear that a lot. It sounds like a marketing term. What are you expecting to hear? What does that mean for Docker? I'm not so sure that lock-in is uh, always important for every enterprise uh, in that any choice you make uh, it has a certain element of lock-in, but it's an active, an active argument or, or debate online that I, I see a lot. Are you locked in when you go to a certain cloud? Are you locked in when you choose a certain provider? Whether it's open source or not. Certainly a lot of Docker is open source. A lot of uh, your choices are protected. And they are really trying to say we're going to be a platform that's going to uh, be, a, be service a lot of different uh, abilities to, ex to uh, deploy. The big announcement uh, that, that, that finished off the keynote was Docker Enterprise Edition can now manage Kubernetes not only Kubernetes in the cloud, uh, Kubernetes on-prem, Kubernetes in the cloud managed by Docker, but can actually work with the native Kubernetes cluster managers of the clouds, of the three major clouds. Google GKE, Azure AKS, and, uh, and AWS uh, uh, EKS. I think I got all those names right. But that's big because a lot of folks say run anywhere, but they mean run within our environment anywhere. And what Docker has done in, in Tech Preview is to connect its platform with the native platforms, uh, orchestration platforms of the three different clouds so that you can run on-prem, manage via Docker, or you can connect into the cloud's own cluster orchestration. And if they can deliver on that, devil's in the details, but if they can deliver on that, that's actually a nice, a very nice feature to avoid that sort of lock-in. And that also goes to, John, one of the major themes, which is agility. And you know, one of the things that they talked about is containers today are portable, but one of the challenges is that management of containers has not been portable. I think they said that 85% uh, as approximately of enterprise IT organizations that they, I think, have surveyed are running a multi-cloud strategy. So they've got to be able to really deliver this single pane of glass management. So they talked about federated application or federated management of containerized applications. I think that's kind of what you're referring to in terms of getting away from the silos, enabling organizations to have that portability and especially as multinational organizations need to have different access, different security, policies may be maintained across multiple locations. Indeed, right. These are global organizations that are betting on container technology. Uh, they do need access to be running apps, either parts of apps or services on different clouds. You might be running on Google Cloud in Europe, you might be running on AWS here or vice versa. You might have some on-prem stuff. We, we've seen a lot of that. I think another theme that we'll hit on, Lisa, along with that multi-cloud portfolio aspect, is the time to value. Um, it's been a theme of, of this conference season, this last month or two. You and I have both been uh, at a lot of different conference centers. And I think time to value, being able to spin up apps within weeks or months that actually work and have value versus the old way, which was years. And I think the theme for 2018 is that it's real. People are actually doing it. And we'll talk to a couple of customers, I hope, today. And that's essential because enterprises, while there's still trepidation with moving into the container journey, they don't really have a choice to be able to aggressively innovate, to be able to be leaders and compete with these cloud native organizations. They don't have the luxury of time to rip and replace old uh, enterprise applications and put them on a container or a microservices based architecture. They've got to be able to leverage something like containers to maximize time to value to be able to deliver differentiating services. Absolutely. Uh, it, I'm very interested in being here today, and uh, we'll see what we'll see what the day brings us. Here I think at we're going to have a lot of fun today, John. I think they they kicked off things with great energy. I loved how you know they always do demos right on main stage during uh, general sessions, and we were at SAP last week, and of course one of the demos didn't work. That's just the nature of trying to do things live. I liked how they were very cheeky with 
with uh, praying to the demo gods with the fortune cookies. Uh, I thought that was really good, but their demos were simple. They were very clearly presented, and I'm excited with you to dig into what are they doing. Also, what is setting them apart, and how are they enabling enterprise organizations like MetLife, like McKesson, PayPal, Splunk, to be able to transform to compete? Absolutely. One last thing about the conference, Lisa. I do want to call out, uh, it's a very humane conference. Not only do they have kind of a cheeky sense of humor here at Docker, but there's uh, childcare on site, and there's uh, spouse activities. There's a, there are activities for if you bring your spouse or family to the conference. They, they're trying to do a lot of things to make the conference experience uh, good and, and successful and friendly and humane for people here at the show. I like that, I really a appreciate. humane conference. You're right, we don't always see that. Well, John and I are going to be here all day talking with Docker executives, customers, partners, and we're excited to have you with us. Lisa Martin for John Troyer. You're watching theCUBE at DockerCon 2018. We'll be right back with our first guest.